Today, Washington saw a ghost. Hey, folks. Hi. My name's Joe Biden. <laughs> Welcome, Welcome, Mr. Mr. President. We've been waiting for you. Welcome to the swimming pool. It was the first time Biden ever set foot in the briefing room as president. The press was stunned. Peter Ducey's wig fell off. And every channel in America cut straight to it. We were actually about to go live to Vice President Kamala Harris, who's speaking right now in Detroit, Michigan. And apparently she's talking about this port strike ending. She's trying to appeal to union workers. And yet you have the president of the United States come out uh, clearly overshadowing her, answering significant questions. Is that a communications mistake? Is, is the left hand not talking to the right hand? And Kamala Harris was about to go on TV and take credit for ending the port strike. And Biden looked and said, oh, no, you don't. And bigfooted her. Biden wanted full credit. He's a lame duck, but even lame ducks care about their legacy. If you're the Harris campaign, it's like Biden's haunting you from the grave. Since the coup, Biden hasn't left his room for 43 days. He's gone 43 days without anybody laying eyes on him. There's a ghost in the White House. And in 15 minutes, that ghost spooked the Harris campaign. I'm in constant contact with her. She's aware we're, we're, all, we're singing from the same song sheet. We, uh, she helped pass the, all the laws that are being employed now. She was a major player in everything we've done, including passage of the legislation which we were told we could never pass. And so she's been, uh, and her, her staff is interlocked with mine in terms of all the things we're doing. Biden just said Kamala is responsible for the last four years. That is going to hurt. Seeing Biden again brought back memories. Biden and the press were catching up on all of their favorite topics. The election is a month away. One, I'd like to know how you're feeling about how this election is going. And then also, do you have confidence that it will be a free and fair election and that it will be peaceful? Two separate questions. Very much. I'm confident it'll be free and fair. I don't know whether it'll be peaceful. The president of the United States should say, this is gonna be a free and fair election and we have everything under control. He shouldn't say, I don't know, could get a little violent. We'll see what happens. But it was time for Biden to leave. The reporters asked him to get back in the race. Do you want to reconsider dropping out of the race? I'm back in. <laughs> it's actually funny, but the reporters see the same poll numbers we do. Biden might have a better shot, and he still thinks he can win. Biden, deep down, wants Kamala to lose. First Lady Jill Biden isn't on the campaign trail with Kamala. Biden's not on the campaign trail with Kamala. He's actually hurting her campaign, saying she co-signed all of his economic policies and then kicking her off TV so she couldn't get credit for the port deal. If Kamala Harris loses, Biden will blame one guy, Barack Obama. This would be the second time Barack forced Joe out in 2016 for Hillary and 2024 for Harris, with Trump beating them both times. If Biden sees Kamala go down, he'll look at Barry and say, I told you so. That's if they're even talking, because they're not talking right now. But someone's gonna be doing a lot of talking. That's Barack. Kamala Harris's internal poll numbers must be so bad. They're making the Messiah leave Hawaii to hit the trail for the home stretch. President Obama, they are calling on him to go to Pittsburgh next week as they lean on his star power to turn out the vote, his star power among Democrats at least. And uh, we have seen this um, to great effect in several last election cycles where Obama is sort of called in in the final hour in order to thwart Democratic complacency. Barack Obama's having second thoughts about the second, second coming Kamala Harris. Taylor Swift didn't do it. Walls blew it. Now Obama has to come in and stop the bleeding. I have to ask you about your old boss on the campaign trail. Um, yeah, I know you say you're dubious of celebrity endorsements. He's also a, a, perhaps the best liked politician or former politician out there. And he has constituencies. And one of those constituencies is younger black 
man who has been a Still? focus of his uh, work. And that's also a big weak spot for Kamala Harris. If there's one place among uh, African-American voters where she needs help, it's there. Blacks are a big weak spot. <laughs> Not to mention white dudes, unions, Hispanics, millennials. Harris is underperforming in every demographic compared to Joe. This is all hands on deck. Obama's even cutting ads for Senate candidates now. Michigan, this is Barack Obama. I want to talk with you about the Alyssa Slotkin I know. She'll get the job done. And she will make you proud. What? Alyssa Slotkin? How embarrassing to be used like this. You're the former president of the United States. Oh, here's a woman you've never heard of. Vote for her. Does Obama have anything else to do? Go live your life. Politics isn't everything, man. Obama had to take over this campaign because there's no sugar left in the sugar high. She peaked. And Democrats, including Barack, are, quote, concerned that she's acting like she's sitting on a lead in a tied race. That's according to NBC. Democrats say they're trying to keep her away. It's like seeing your favorite Hollywood actor and then they're on a talk show and they can't even speak. Look what just happened in Michigan. It looks like her teleprompter went down. So 32 days, 32 days. Okay, we got some business to do. We got some business to do. All right, 32 days. And we know we will do it. 32 days. Kamala went on a podcast with two NBA players and they had to run every single topic by the campaign. We gave her a skeleton and outline of the direction the conversation wanted to go. Um, and then literally we're making up questions right up until, you know, we left in the car to go see her. Democrats are trying to script the Harris campaign like a movie. Obama's the director. And when the lights are on and the cameras are rolling, Biden just storms the stage like he's Will Smith. Barack thought he had the last laugh with the coup, but everyone knows nobody Fs with a Biden.